So this is the 20s, very early 20s, and the R.S. Williams Company in Toronto stood behind Arthur Hensel. And this young German builder, hand builder, was building his guitars one at a time. You know, very simple design. These bridges were sort of made on mass. You know, somebody had a shaper set up and they were just, there was a few different companies that used this exact bridge. Fingerboard is Brazilian rosewood and you can see that these guitars were basically finished with a, a shellac, just with a brush. And even the chip carving detail, you know, in the headstock, a tremendous amount of work went into making this guitar. You can see that that neck, it has loosened off, and this is definitely hide glue. This whole thing was put together with hide glue. So we are going to release this dovetail and then reset the neck. And at the same time, uh, we're going to reshape this Brazilian rosewood fingerboard to a more contemporary uh, 20 inch or 22 inch radius, very shallow radius, and do a complete refret with a larger fret. We are just setting up to steam off the fingerboard extension. So you see all those small diameter holes that are drilled in there. You have to keep in mind that when you're working with hide glue, it's not just heat, but it's heat and steam that you want to safely loosen the glue joint. We have a slightly dampened cloth that I've laid over top of all those holes that to allow the steam to infiltrate the glue joint on the underside of the fingerboard extension. So we're going to give that about five to seven minutes. I'll check it as we go. And then we'll slip that fingerboard extension off nice and clean. Now as that cloth heats up, it will naturally dry out. I have a 3cc syringe filled with water and I'm just kind of keeping it a little, just a, not soaking wet, but just a little bit damp and let that heat and steam work its magic. On so that. I've removed the cloth now for a little bit so we'll actually heat up the body of the rosewood fingerboard and then I'll, I'll put that slightly dampened cloth in place again and steam that just a little bit further. Again, we'll let that heat get directly on the fingerboard now that we've kind of wetted it a little bit. And it's the combination of the heat and the steam that will loosen up that fingerboard extension safely and get it off cleanly. We did get the neck off pretty cleanly. There's, uh, there's a little ruffle of uh, wood fibers there, but <laughs> you can't ask for more than that. That came off super clean. So I got that cloth over the bridge pin holes and then took that 3cc syringe and then I wicked water onto that cloth to get a little bit of steam through those bridge pin holes to loosen up that high glue on the underside. Okay, there's some type of indexing pin in this one. Oh, it's just like a little brad. See, nothing broke off. This is how the, the dovetail looked when it came out. And I have put an insert in there and I've actually bored through the head block. So this is kind of a modern joint for an old guitar. You know, there's all kinds of guitars, high-end, mid-price, low-end guitars that use fasteners. So we are going to utilize the original dovetail, and I am going to glue it on with hide glue. We'll get a good solid press fit, but we're just going to have that little bit of extra assurance with that fastener, pan head fastener, that's the head of the fastener. The other reason I wanted to actually fasten that neck on, uh, the fingerboard itself is dead flat. We're actually going to put a very shallow curvature in that, probably a 20 inch or 22 inch. Uh, so by having the neck bolted on like that dry run, uh, then I can just unbolt it, put my frets in 
while the guitar is off the body with a backer block. So that's why we're doing it in this order. Okay, before I reattach this neck, I just want to show you where we're going with this. So I have some double-sided tape on the underside of that Brazilian rosewood fingerboard. That's going to hold the fingerboard down to the surface of the soundboard as I chase that radius into the fingerboard in preparation for the new frets. Uh, like I mentioned in previous videos, there's six different planes that need to be considered when, when you adjust the neck to body angle. This needed to be sort of tilted back this way. And this so you've got this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, and lastly we've got this angle and this angle. So all six angles have now been adjusted. For so I just wanted to bring you into the loop on that one. So I have that double-sided tape on there. So we're just basically going to press that down to the soundboard and we'll let that double-sided tape uh, set for a second. Then we'll be able to shoot the fingerboard and put that radius in and, and get that final neck to body angle perfect before we put the new frets in. everyone some tips on uh, getting a bridge plate off of an acoustic guitar soundboard on the inside so what I have here is I'm kind of set up this is this uh, early 20s Hensel guitar the bridge plate itself was kind of split in half and crumbling to pieces so I'm gonna put a new bridge plate in but of course a big part of the job is getting the remnants of the original bridge plate out so I've got the guitar set up so it's horizontal I have a slightly dampened cloth that I've put inside the sound hole on top of the bridge plate and on top of that wet cloth I've got a 80 watt light bulb. I've got that 80 watt light bulb set for seven minutes. There's about four minutes left. On the inside against the back I have this heat shield and the light bulb is butted up against that. So this concentrates the heat and moisture onto the bridge plate. This is a remnant of the original bridge plate which was a really thick mahogany bridge plate but the problem was that is the back edge of the bridge plate. The back portion just busted right off. Two things I've done. I've switched to rosewood a thinner, lighter, stronger piece than the original mahogany piece. I've also added this sort of elliptical curve on the back half so that there's just a little bit more meat on that back end so it doesn't split across the bridge pins like this one did. And, uh, just getting ready to glue that bridge plate in. And there's this uh, cherry call over top. That call has actually been radius the foot. So we'll let that high glue set overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and uh, we'll be gluing the bridge on. Both the rosewood bridge plate and the Macassar ebony bridge are now glued on. Still have to finish up that neck reset. There's some steps that I take to ensure that all the frets are seated perfectly and that the neck or fretboard are not compromised with the installation of these frets. So this is the setup I've got. The neck is held by the neck assembly. So I'm about to put the frets in over the fingerboard extension. So I've got a block of quarter sawn hard maple shaped into a wedge and that rests on the floor of the body platform and that gives me the backup or the inertia against the hammer blow when I tap those frets in. So I have pre-cut all of these uh, frets and notched out the underside so it overhangs the binding. Never took the original binding off. I've even polished the ends so that when I do do that final edge dress, I'm not loosening up the frets. So this is a one pound dead blow hammer. Plenty of force to drive those frets in. So as I'm putting these frets in, the fingerboard extension, the neck itself is held by the pivoting neck assemblies and it's allowed to sort of pivot slightly and that allows that fingerboard extension 
to lie flat against that solid maple when I drive in those top frets. The actual final recrown and level will be done once the neck is reattached. I want to give as many details as I can before I re-glue the neck. I'm just getting ready to heat up the hide glue. Before I do, let me point out a couple more things. This dovetail is extremely shallow. It's a very small dovetail. There's not a lot of bearing edge. And of course the other reason was there was a couple of shims. So obviously this guy had a little bit of trouble kind of getting the perfect neck to body angle initially on, on the guitar when it was built. So the hide glue is only spread on this surface here, not on the face. There's no glue on here. It's only the dovetail and then that mechanical fastener will pull it in tight. And of course the underside of the fingerboard will be glued on with hide glue as well. Another detail I wanted to point out in case anyone comes across one of these guitars. This was the hole that was drilled to steam the snack off. There's one on this side of the dovetail and there's one here on the other side of the dovetail. So that's how I steam the neck off. Of course the neck to body angle was readjusted. We got that perfect. All the frets are in. I'm a big fan of not cutting off the fingerboard extension. So this Brazilian rosewood fingerboard is still completely intact. I used a very tiny drill bit to through drill those holes where I put the wet cloth on the fingerboard and I gently steam that hide glue loose. I just wanted to give you one last look before I glue this on. There were shims on this dovetail when I took it out and I'm putting shims on again so that I've got two little strips of zircote which is like a Mexican rosewood that I'm putting on either side of that dovetail. So by putting those shims in there that gives me a solid mechanical press fit. The female insert and corresponding male fastener will pull that heel in tight. We've got a perfect angle on the neck reset. We'll be able to put the action anywhere we want it. Here we go, moment of truth. We've just got a hint of glue squeeze. Beautiful. All the way along there. Across the end of the fingerboard. And around the other side. So we'll let that set overnight. Here's where we're at now. The fret job is done. Frets have been leveled, crowned, and polished. Just finished up that bone saddle. Match that radius to the 20 inch radius that we put on that fingerboard. We're just about to cut a new nut. Now I have a chunk of uh, water buffalo tusk for a compensated nut. I did replace the bridge because this one was split across the pinholes. And the other reason it needed to be replaced, if you look closely, look where the look where the base side was. This is where the base side needed to be for the instrument to tune. This side here was a little bit closer, but even it needed to be moved forward. Now it plays in tune. Now I've got the new EVO frets in there. They're 100 by 51 thou high. We've got the Water Buffalo Tusk Compensated Nut. I have a couple more details for my Patreon subscribers concerning knocking those frets in at the neck to body junction. So let me explain. So this fret, this fret, and this fret, those three, so the 12th, the 11th, and the 10th. When I tap those frets in, I have a leather shot bag here in between the rails of the Tecdex body platform and that protrudes above the rails so the head block of the guitar rests against that dead weight lead filled leather bag. So when I tap these in we're not shocking the neck joint. So it's just those three frets 12, 11 and 10. Just wanted to point that out. I'm on the home stretch with this thing. I'm about to play it so you get a chance to kind of hear it, the intonation. So there you go and thank you for subscribing to my Patreon channel. Cheers. I also wanted to give you a better view of what needed to be done in order for this guitar to be in tune. This is the original bridge. You see how far back the slot is for the low E string. Well this guitar would never play in tune until I moved the focal point forward. Now you can see on the high E string 
It wasn't as bad, but like I've said in so many other videos, there's no close enough for rock and roll. The guitar is in tune or it's not in tune. And this one, as you'll hear in a second, is 100% surgically perfectly in tune. And this bone saddle is glued in with high glue. Well, this 62.4 millimeter scale with the uh, 10, to, 10 to 47 strings is perfectly in tune. It's actually a beautiful voice. 